Alright, so Meta has officially gone all in on AI. They're now building data centers literally the size of Manhattan, and on top of that, they might be ditching open source altogether. Meanwhile, OpenAI's internal model just won gold at the International Math Olympiad, an achievement many thought was still years away. And what's even more impressive is how they actually pulled it off. But while we're quickly making leaps in reasoning and agentic capabilities, in a concerning new paper, experts warned that we might also be quickly losing control. Let's get into it. So jumping right into the Meta data center reports, it states, Mark Zuckerberg proclaimed that Meta would spend hundreds of billions of dollars on developing artificial intelligence products in the near future. And to that end, construct a data center planned to be nearly the size of Manhattan. So this is kind of insane. Meta already has its first multi-gigawatt data center, Prometheus, expected to go live in 2026. And another one called Hyperion, which Zuckerberg says could scale to 5 gigawatts over time. And so with a ton more access to compute coming in the near future, the CEO of Scale AI now on their side, the countless researchers poached from top AI labs, particularly OpenAI, including the two more they just stole this week, Jason Wei and Hyung Wan Chung. And now, with their plans to shift into a closed source AI company that can actually make money, it's starting to look like Meta is a serious contender, with the potential of maybe even being the leader if Google and OpenAI aren't careful. I seriously don't think we should underestimate the Zuck. Now, speaking of Google and OpenAI, they're currently the only two companies to have an AI model achieve a silver medal or higher on the International Math Olympiad, one of the most elite math competitions in the world. But this week, OpenAI went a step further. Their quote, experimental reasoning LLM achieved gold medal level performance. So why is this a big deal? Well, as OpenAI researcher Alexander Wei explains, IMO problems demand a new level of sustained creative thinking compared to past benchmarks. When you look at what's called the reasoning time horizon, basically how long a model can stay focused and reason coherently, we've gone from GSM-8K, roughly 0.1 minutes for top humans, to the math benchmark, roughly one minute, to Amy, roughly 10 minutes, to the IMO, roughly 100 minutes. That's a 10x leap in reasoning depth at every stage. Meaning, these models are not only getting smarter, but they're also starting to be able to reason for much longer. And secondly, IMO submissions are hard to verify. And so progress here calls for going beyond the reinforcement learning paradigm of clear-cut verifiable rewards. By doing so, they've obtained a model that can craft intricate, watertight arguments at the level of human mathematicians. So I think we're literally seeing a new paradigm here, guys. As Sam Altman says in his tweet, we achieved gold medal level performance on the 2025 IMO competition with a general purpose reasoning system. To emphasize, this is an LLM doing math and not a specific formal math system. So again, this wasn't some specialized math engine. This was simply an LLM that achieved gold medal level performance. For comparison, when Google got silver last year, they used two separate models, Alpha Geometry 2 and Alpha Proof. But even then, they still had to include handwritten problem decomposition prompts from humans to guide the models through each problem. So not only was it not fully autonomous, but it was also multiple models working together, unlike OpenAI's general purpose LLM. I mean, you know it's a breakthrough when their biggest hater, Gary Marcus, says, quote, that's impressive. Now, in terms of when we can expect the model, here's what Sam Altman wrote. We are releasing GPT-5 soon, but want to set accurate expectations. This is an experimental model that incorporates new research techniques we will use in future models. We think you will love GPT-5, but we don't plan to release a model with IMO gold level of capability for many months. So this model is not GPT-5, but GPT-5 is coming soon. And they don't plan on releasing this model for many months, unfortunately. Now, in some other OpenAI news, they also dropped ChatGPT Agent this week a fully autonomous AI agent that has access to its own computer. It can browse the web, conduct deep research, 
generates images, spreadsheets, graphics, whatever you need. You can think of it as an all-in-one AI agent that has access to all the tools a human with ChatGPT would. And that again, has its own cloud-based computer it can operate in. Now, we won't go too deep into it. I already covered it fully in one of my last videos. I'll pop that up on screen right now for anyone who might wanna check it out. But as you can see, it's doing quite well on benchmarks. It's near Grok4 level on humanity's last exam, scores 27% on frontier math, does exceptionally well on agentic benchmarks, unsurprisingly, and does very well on real world benchmarks too, like spreadsheet bench and the internal banking benchmark. Also, what's cool is that this slide deck was actually generated by ChatGPT agent itself during their live presentation. So yeah, a huge week in the AI space and we're still not even done yet. In other news, Amazon launched their own AI IDE this week out of nowhere called Cairo. If you're not familiar, an AI IDE is basically a coding workspace like Cursor or Replit, but that is built for the AI native era. Kiro comes with built-in agentic capabilities, tight integration with AWS services, and a slick user interface that lets you collaborate with AI agents directly inside your development workflow. It also supports multi-agent interactions, real-time previews, and even project memory. Now, I'm not too familiar with AI IDEs myself, to be honest, but I'm curious to see how this shakes up to some of the other bigger and more established players in the space, like again, Cursor or Replit. And so if any of you watching actually use these kinds of tools regularly, drop a comment. I'd love to hear how Kiro compares so far. I know it's still early, but Amazon clearly wants a piece of the space. And while we're on the topic of AI coding, this caught my eye. Anthropic just launched an analytics dashboard for Claude Code Enterprise users. And according to a recent report, it led to a 5.5x increase in revenue. Now, the reason I think this is important is because one of the biggest complaints companies have with AI tools is that they can't really tell how people are using them, or even if they're using them effectively. And so being able to track usage, impact, and outcomes with clear business-friendly metrics seems like an absolute game changer. I can see this quietly ramping up enterprise adoption to a whole nother level. Now, here's something you may have missed. Elon Musk tweeted, We are creating a multi-agent AI software company at XAI, where Grok spawns hundreds of specialized coding and image slash video generation slash understanding agents all working together and then emulates humans interacting with the software in virtual machines until the result is excellent. So this actually sounds wild. I mean, it seems like they're literally trying to create a simulation. He then says, this is a macro challenge and a hard problem with stiff competition. Can you guess the name of this company? So yeah, a macro challenge and a hard problem. They're literally gonna call this macro hard. And now finally, here is the new concerning paper I briefly mentioned in the intro. It's called Chain of Thought Monitorability, a new and fragile opportunity for AI safety. And here are the many contributors. You've got Mark Chen, OpenAI, Yashua Bengio, Daniel Kokotayo, Shane Legg, and a ton more. As you can see here, they also list some of their expert endorsers, such as Samuel R. Bowman, Anthropic, Jeffrey Hinton, Godfather of AI, John Schulman, and Ilya Sutskever. So clearly, this is an extremely credible paper, and it's not often that you see so many different top figures in the space collaborate like this. Now, the core idea of the paper is that as language models think out loud using chains of thought, we actually get a rare window into their reasoning and a chance to catch harmful behavior before it happens. But the problem is, the window is fragile and closing fast. And if we don't act now to make these thought processes more transparent and moderable, we could lose that leverage entirely. So that's basically the whole essence of this paper. It's a warning to other top AI labs that we're quite literally losing the ability to understand what these models are thinking. And without the ability to understand or see their thoughts, it will obviously be much harder to prevent unwanted, potentially dangerous behavior. 
But what I found particularly concerning this week as well is what OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said at a live conference in Japan. This clip I'm about to play, along with the paper we just looked at, makes me think AI researchers are starting to realize it might actually be too late. Check this out. The national securities, the US, China, uh, Middle East, Russia, people are fighting each other for difference in opinion or different in ideology and people shoot each other. Still, war has not finished. This is well out of my area of expertise. Uh, I'm not, I agree with you. It's going to be an extremely powerful, maybe the high order bit of geopolitical power. There have been other times in history, like with nuclear weapons, where the world has come together and said, hey, this is an amazingly powerful thing. We need some serious international standards and we need to we need to avoid a predictable, disastrous outcome. And I'm very impressed the world came together on nuclear and that we have not detonated a bomb in war in a very long time. Is the world going to be able to do that again with AI weapons? I hope so. I believe so. But it is a different time than, you know, the 1940s. And I don't know how that's all going to come together. So, yeah. I mean, it truly feels like the exponential curve has already begun, and there's no turning back anymore. I know some people would disagree with that, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. But the pace at which we're progressing right now is actually insane. Like, scary insane. And while we're making leaps with software, the hardware side of things is slowly starting to catch up. I mean, the humanoid robot demos we've been seeing out of China never fail to amaze. From running, to playing sports, to fighting, humanoid robots are starting to gain real-world abilities. It's really only a matter of time before one of these things learns how to sprint, reload, and file a patent, and then it's game over. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, drop your thoughts below, and as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.